Nigeria's Financial Reporting Council last week gave Stambic IBTC, the local unit of Standard Bank, 60 days to restate its 2013 and 2014 accounts because of what it said were, quote, misleading disclosures relating to expenses and imposed a fine of a billion naira. However, responding to the allegations, Nigeria Central Bank said it did not find, quote, material misrepresentation on the commercial lender's past books and saw no need to ask it to, be, to restate its accounts. Earlier, Zelda Akindele, Managing Counsel at Templars Law, joined us to discuss the lessons learned from this exchange. And the FRC had actually had a petition from some of the minority shareholders in Stambic IBTC, and they looked into the accounts. And ordinarily, what the FRC Act and the regulations prescribe is that they would look into it, they would determine that there had been some semblance of misleading information in the financial statements, and they would notify the entity, in this case, Stambic IBTC, and they would then give that entity 60 days in which to restate the accounts. But that was if the entity agreed with them. Otherwise, they would channel the cha challenge the decision. Okay. In this case, they notified Stambic IBTC, but concurrent with that notification, they imposed certain sanctions. Without a response. From, exactly. Okay. That was where the first uh, rancor came about. Okay. Yes. So that's what kicked off all the issues, because they said, we consider your statement, your financial statement. First of all, they said, you have to restate your financial statements for year ending 2013 and 2014. And at the same time, they revoked the FRC numbers for the chairman of the bank, for the MD, two directors, and also the engagement audit partner at KPMG. KPMG. I mean, those are pretty solid, you know, that's quite stringent sanction. At least it was considered so by the market. You will notice that mm -hmm. Stambik's share price dropped on that news. That's so let, sorry, let, quick, let me quickly butt in here. Do you think that because you, you said those are, those are quite stringent. I'm, I want to read a quote from FRC they, uh, where it says, Stambic IBTC seems to have a, p a penchant for poor disclosures, which further corroborates the findings in this report. Do you think perhaps because of, I don't know, past uh, precedent, that's why they decided to go this tough igno on Stambic IBTC? Well, you can, I'm just asking. <laughs> you can decide to be tough. And I think that Nigerian regulators are sitting up now. We see this with a lot of you know, the other regulators in our markets. But if you're going to do that, if you're going to wield that big stick, then you have to do it properly and correctly. And now they're in the federal high court over this because they haven't observed the due process they were supposed to. Okay, so now apart from that, Stamic IBTC actually also says that many of the issues that they're being indicted over are not even matters of financial reporting, but matters of business decision and judgment by the bank and its board of directors. Is that true? If well, you, so says <laughs> Stambic IBTC. <laughs> if you go into the actual facts of the case and everything, it would appear that that is the case, that is the situation. But I think the bigger picture here is actually the manner in which FRC has approached these allegations, the manner in which they have you know, sought to regulate what they perceive to be misleading information in the statements. They haven't given them enough time to restate, to present their case, and they've imposed these sanctions. Okay, so clearly yeah. they have added so in, in, in that regard. The, yes, but even FRC. if you look at the regulatory decision by FRC, they've, they've already made a judgment call because they said, you know, when, when they suspended the FRC numbers for those personnel from Stambic, mm -hmm. for example, they said pending an investigation into the extent of their negligence in concealing or giving poor information, which means they've already decided that it was negligence, you Absolutely. know. So okay. they haven't allowed that period for the okay. investigation, et cetera. But let's bring in the CBN here. I, know that, I, I mean, from the past, I know that the CBN is fiercely pr protective of the banks, not to say that uh, the CBN won't go tougher on the banks when they air, but how does the CBN uh, come into all of this? We saw the CBN well, responding on behalf of uh, Stambic IBTC. Well, it wasn't actually on behalf of Stambic IBTC, although they came out heavily in favor of okay. Stambic. But with their regulatory decision, FRC actually called on CBN to impose sanctions further. and yeah, further sanctions. And they, they actually also reached out to the FIRS and okay. EFCC as okay. well. You know, um, CBN looked at the allegations, they looked at everything, and they said, actually, no, we don't agree with you. We don't think that Stambic should, should have been sanctioned. We don't think that Stambic's accounts have a problem. And they did actually state all the instances where they okay. thought that the reporting was fine. It's surprising that as the apex regulator, CBN will come out so strongly yeah. in favor of Stambic. But I think that gives us a good okay. indication of right. the market perception. Zelda Akendele, Managing Counsel at Templars Law, giving some perspective on the Stambic IBDC and the FRC exchange. More on Closing Bell West Africa.